Hey, how you doing? We uh, we are here once again to uh, share with you what the Lord has been uh, sharing with us. So, but the first thing we wanted to do just just to start things off, look what we got in just the other day. Ah, there it is, above the snake line, the book. <laughs> See, as as a uh, uh, goodness, as as we've been just anxiously awaiting. Um, the above the snake line booklet is just it's just packed full of 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 Bob's revelation on being above the snake line, living ab above the demon, uh, above the demon zone, and in in the heavenlies uh, where where uh, the devil and and all all the darkness cannot get to you, but how to be there and and how to how to operate from above the snake line is is included in this book and uh, we'll we'll do like a little link to um to if you want to get that on uh on the website or uh at our bookstore and uh they're also available on uh, kindle uh and uh, we're, we're also, uh, just, just a quick note, we're also doing a three-book, boom, 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 there we go, three-book special for the summer. Um, so it's the Fruit of the Spirit, 341, and above the snake line, wherever it went, there it is. Um, you get those uh, for, I think it's like $13. So anyways, um, they're available on the bookstore as well and uh, we'll put a little link there somewhere on the on this YouTube channel and uh, so anyways we we're going to talk about um, the blood of the lamb the word of the testimony and loving not our lives unto death that is what overcomes the world but um, it's interesting to me um, that a lot of people today, they, they, I'm going to use the book here and pretend this is like my iPad or my phone. Uh, I just keep my testimony to myself and I isolate myself away from everybody else because I'm busy with everything that's here. And, you know, and I consider this being my life instead of relationship. Um, God is relational and his uh his whole setup of the church is is based in relationship uh and I, i'm going to use that scripture the blood of the lamb is what he's done for us really doesn't if if we we say oh i did this and i did that then your gospel is a little messed up because God's done it. He's done it all. He, he's the owner of everything. And, and we get to you know, co-own. We get to partake in what is his. He's made the agreement, and we either agree or we disagree. So we cooperate. Correct. All right. So the blood of the Lamb is what he's done for us. The word of our testimony is what we've done with the blood that he's provided. That's, that's where we come in. He's provided the blood to cover us. We can step under that covering. We can stand off from that covering, you know, point fingers at it, say what we think is wrong, give our ideals about it and everything else. But that's our testimony. And then the important part is that here's what he's done for me. He's covered me. I've moved into agreement with him. But now I love my life not unto death, meaning I got to share it with someone else. I can, I can talk with God about it, and that's good. That, that develops me. But I also talk with, I talk with mom about it. And uh, this gets interesting because now I've I've shared something with her, and and basically I'm just gonna say here here it is. This is not the iPad or the the phone, but here's 
here's my testimony. And, and I've given you, uh, I've shared with you some of the blood of Jesus. Now she can do whatever she wants with it. She can, she can go under that covering. She can reject it. She can put it on the shelf for a while. Yeah. She could do whatever she wants with it. I can read it. You can read it, yeah. But whatever she does with it is her deal with God not mine. I've already shared. Now, thinking on this, I've, I'm going to make an apology here in, in, a, in a few minutes, but I've, I've realized like there's, there's been some things done in the past where we'll say, I've got this testimony here. I've received the blood of the lamb. I've, I've, I don't know, developed my own theology on it, or I've worked out a relationship with the Lord, whatever I've done. When I go and I share with someone what God's done with me, this is one of the places where I'm going to say there, there's a pitfall. I cannot, well, I can, but I should not force her to agree with what I've done. There's an important scripture, I believe it might be Leviticus, uh, it says, don't force your neighbor to move his landmarks. Uh, now, this, this kind of coincides with, with what I'm talking about. You do not, I can't, I should not force her to, to accept my revelation. She's got to walk out her testimony with God herself just like you have uh, and this is where the apology comes in there there were missionaries that went into Asia and forced people to uh, to dress differently I think I think it was China I might be mistaken but they the the men wore what would be considered dresses and the women wore what would be considered pants. So visually it looked incorrect to the, to the Caucasian dress code, but that culturally was the way that the way that the culture was, it was nothing wrong with it. It worked society with the society and everything else, uh, whether it had to deal with agriculture or whatever it, that's how that's how the culture was set up, and there was nothing inappropriate about the dress code. However, as as a Christian group that came in, the missionary said, "Well, this is opposite," and they accused them of wearing the the you know. They they basically brought in the scripture and said, "Man should not not wear women's clothes. Women should not wear men's clothes." So they basically accused them of, of doing the wrong thing and then made them swap. So basically made them do the thing that they were accusing them of. Right. Culturally. Yeah. Because my, my revelation didn't match up with your revelation. So you're obviously wrong. So you have to, you have to do what, what I say is in, in my cup of revelation. That's not, that's not it. Culturally, she might have something completely different than I do, and that does not make her wrong, and it doesn't make her right. It just makes her relationship with God something that she's working on and makes my relationship something that I'm working on. God is relational, and that's where we, that's where we need to start. My relationship with her is my relationship with her, and no one else comes in between that except God. And that's where that blood of the lamb comes in. Because I, I say the testimony uh, is like the mortar for the temple of God. If we are, like, like the scripture says, if we are the, the temple of God, if we're like uh, stones in the temple of God, then our testimony and, and his blood is like the mortar that, that 
links us together and makes us a strong unit. If I sit back and I do nothing, I, I don't share, I just build myself up. That's, that's nice, I built myself up. I become a, a, a large stone sitting around in the temple of God. I actually have to go and do something with that or I'm just kind of like a stumbling block in the, in the house of God. I need, to, I need to actually love not my life unto death. And that's what overcomes the world. Well, you know, that reminds me of in Bob's death experience, the 75, mm -hmm. the old lady that was in line ahead of him. Yeah. She loved the Lord, but she never shared that love with anybody else. Correct. You know, so that's, that's the same thing you're saying there. You know, you have your testimony, but if you just sit home with knitting needles and never share that love, you know, with anybody else, I mean, share your testimony, mm -hmm. then what, what is it? Just between you and God, and you've never shared it, so nobody understands the yeah. working of God in your life, just like they did with that woman. Yeah. 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 So, is there is there anything else you have on? No, I think that was really good. I, you know, I mean, it is. You've got you've got to share. You know, your testimony. That's how, like Bill Johnson. They have testimonies of of faith and how mm -hmm. people got healed. Mm -hmm. And through that testimony, you know, when they share that, that's how other people get healed. You know, somebody got healed from, yeah. you know, uh, cancer. You know, maybe yeah. it's a specific, maybe it's colon cancer, whatever. And when that person shares that, they're not just sitting home saying, oh, thank you. I mean, it's great. You've got to be thankful. Yeah. It's not that you're just thanking the Lord yourself, but you're sharing it. Yeah. Other people hear it. And it's that faith, you yeah. know, their faith and the person who's hearing it and they receive it and they, yeah. it's contagious. Yeah. So, I mean, Bill, Bill Johnson, their church is, you know, I'm going to say famous for that, sharing their testimony. Yeah. Mahesh Shavda does the same thing. You yeah. know, they're both, you know, move mightily in, in faith and healings, miracles. Signs mm -hmm. and wonders. So, yeah, I mean, we have to, we all have a relationship with the Lord, so we all have a testimony. Mm -hmm. But what do we do with it? Correct. You know, it's like yeah. we get revelation, and what do we do with it? You know, I mean, yeah. I know there are some things that the Lord will say, you know, it's like, I think He's testing us as to one is, will you be obedient? Yeah. And the other one is, Part of obedience is maybe he'll share something with you and he wants you to sit on it for a while because it's not time to release it. Right. But, you know, when he shares, most of the time he shares revelation with you, it's to be shared. Mm. So, but he is a yeah. relational God, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, and uh, just one, one more thing. Uh, I did say I was going to apologize, you know, uh, I, I don't consider myself a missionary or an evangelist per se, but um, being that I am Caucasian, um, on behalf of any of the Caucasian uh, missionaries from you know, hundreds of years ago that, that went into different cultures and uh, misunderstood how, how things were uh, done, um, I apologize uh, that I apologize for the church's uh, mis misrepresentation of the gospel because I think that it really hurt what the Lord was doing. And so um, on, on behalf of, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I apologize for anything that uh, that a a Christian has done for uh, mistakenly for the Lord uh, trying to put something on somebody else that that was uh, inappropriate. So, anyways, we uh, we bless you in the name of Jesus and uh, hope to see you again.